We finally have engines. Let's see what we got. We got not one, but two LRP.28 spec fours. So they're not ordinary LRPs. Oh yeah, they've been modified by Rick at RV Mods. We got a whack of stickers. You see he signed both the heads. Obviously I've already unboxed these and had a look at them. I already went through this one. On camera right now today, we're gonna take this one apart. Just make sure the inside's all clean on this one. she is all disassembled uh, I'll show you guys just real quick here's the crank he signed it made some cuts drill and filled the crank piston should be bone stock just run by the sleeve real quick you can see some of the cuts he made right there to the exhaust as well Beautiful work. Very good job. Very happy. And now I'm going to show you why you might want to disassemble and clean your engines brand new. Especially your cheaper Taiwanese engines like your LRPs or, or whatnot. So this is my uh, LRP.28. All I'm going to do is I'm going to tip it upside down. And I'm going to spray it out with brake clean. And just watch all the crap that comes out on this uh, fresh rag. So you can see that just from that little spray I did, check out all the metal shavings there. There's some metal shavings, uh, some casting sand. All that glitter can kill your engine, especially an engine this small. It may even help if you had an ultrasonic cleaner to just like throw the block in there, uh, remove your bearings first, throw the bare block in the ultrasonic cleaner, yeah, I'll let it go to town for like half hour, blow the block out. And then even go ahead and spray it with some uh, brake clean after. Blow it out with some compressed air. Make sure you got compressed air. Blow it all out good. Um, but yeah, like I said, especially with these Taiwan engines, you might want to do that. Classic SH trick. 13 millimeter oddball crank. Not quite sure where I'm going to get some decent bearings for this, but... And the last thing I forgot to take off the block was the carburetor. So uh, we're going to take it off and uh, we will not be using it. We'll be running a different carburetor. If you had eagle eyes, you might have spotted on the other engine I cleaned up already. Uh, it's got our different carburetor on there and I'll show you in a second. So LRP. X Tech carburetor out. I don't have the new carburetor yet for this. Um, it's coming. I only had one in stock, so. Stand by and uh, I'll show you uh, what we do to fit the new carburetor. So, remember what I was talking about earlier with the junk and crap inside your engines? Well, uh, look what I spotted in here. Just a little tip for these one way bearing engines. Um, I take the starter shaft and I put a little grease on it. Uh, this fast steady grease works really good. Uh, you can also use like a, a red and tacky grease, but uh, I just take a little dab. 
and I put it on the sh uh, starter shaft. And what this does is it seals the starter shaft better, so you're more airtight, and it just uh, it just makes stuff last just a little bit longer. And there you go. So I'm getting ready to throw the engines in the car, uh, but first I need to set up this engine plate. Uh, but first I just want to show you what I did to it. So this is the engine plate that came in the kit, obviously. Um, I was going to get it anodized, but I couldn't find anyone to anodize it. Then I was going to get it powder coated, but then I was cheap and didn't really feel like waiting. So I just went down to the local hardware store, got some black paint, painted it up, and then I uh, chamfered the edges. I got inspiration from the shock towers on the TLR 8XT. I just got like a cheap Amazon Dremel. So I just got a cheap Amazon Dremel. I think this was about 20 bucks. Got some nice carbide bits. These are great for uh, for a lot of things. But uh, these bits were another 20 bucks, I think. So pretty cool. And you can do cool effects like this. If you got a real steady hand, you can do a, a really, really nice job. But uh, I'm happy with that. So I got my plate, got some braces to put on it so we can mount it to the chassis. So the carburetor isn't in yet, but the clutch has showed up. So at least we can slap that on. We can put the motor mount on and uh, we can slap the engine in the car. If you can see in the background here, we already got one installed. So uh, now we can get another one installed. Uh, we have the uh, Alpha 3-shoe clutch, got that from uh, Ryan Lutz, at Lutz RC. And we have a 17-tooth clutch bell, the fairings. So the flywheel's on, now comes the hard part, and I might have to cut the camera because uh, I'm going to be completely honest, three shoe clutches give me anger issues. They're not so bad if it's like a lower tension spring, but like trying to multitask, you know, I don't have the proper tool, so trying to push down and flick the spring a certain way, it uh, really grinds my gears. I guess I'll attempt one, and if I uh, get too rowdy, then... I'll do it off camera. So there's the one shim. Use the black springs for this one. No, this is gonna take some doing off camera. I'm gonna... So there we go, the shoes are installed. I'm uh, not gonna lie, I almost lost my patience using this. But then I remembered I do have a clutch tool from M2C and it just made putting those, sho those shoes in a breeze. All you do is you just get your uh, spring and shoe lined up. You kind of just give it a little twist and push down at the same time. And uh, the shoe locks right in. So, uh, nice one, M2C. If no one buys your clutches, you should just keep selling these tools. Or just offer the tools by themselves because, uh, yeah, that's a, a nifty tool. Nice one. Now I get to fiddle with the uh, shimming. So I got the clutch all shimmed up here. Uh, you notice I don't have a clutch screw on the end there because I got this thing here, JT Bearing Co. Um, it's a little pricey, but it's the features are pretty cool. And you're like, oh, it's just a clutch nut, yeah. But it's it's pretty cool. You see, I'll show you what's so cool about it. First off, you know, you get a sweet little sticky, but. Uh, that, that adds for like five horse right there, but uh, here's the, here's the actual screw. You know, it's got the cool oil slick coating on it, but uh, so it's made from titanium, right? So already it's, it's pretty tough to strip and 
also has a bigger head on it. So instead of using your tra traditional two mil, you can see the two mil doesn't fit. It's got a 2.5. And if you somehow manage to strip that out, it also has a 5.5 millimeter head on it. So you can put a wrench on it or a socket. Personally, like I said, I would just use the 5.5 head for emergencies. And here's that uh, clutch screw. Looks pretty cool with this engine. So now that the clutch is installed, we can put the engine into the mount and then the whole assembly into the truck. So here's our sweet, sweet engine mount. That's gonna go like that. So our engine mount's in. Now one thing before I uh, put this in the car is I wanna take this uh, screw out and I wanna reverse the pinch bolt so that way the screw is facing this way just to make it uh, more serviceable uh, so I can remove the carburetor while it's in the, the car and uh, not have to juggle between engines because this is going to be on the right side. There we go. She's ready to go in for the motor mounts. Like I said, uh, the, Tony, the Tony screw kit is only meant for one engine, so I had to get some extras. So I just went down to my hardware store, got some extra hardware. Why does one pack come with two screws and one comes with three screws? <laughs> what the, the hell? Anyways, anyways, anyways. We got some tires. Oh, look at those tires. The carburetors we'll be using are finally here. And this is what we got. This is a Protec RC Samurai RM21J complete carburetor. Part number PTK-2503. It's literally an OS21J carburetor, uh, but it's badge, badge Protec, so uh, it's way, way cheaper, but it's identical, like I said, to an OS. And uh, funny enough, uh, I bought two of these. One of them came with an O-ring and the other one didn't. This one doesn't. Uh, so if that happens, this is the uh, O-ring you'll need. Uh, it's not a direct fit. You'll need two of them. So uh, so basically the, the OS carburetor is just slightly longer. So you just need a second O-ring to take up the gap. Or you can be fancy and shave the neck of this down. Uh, but this is way easier, so why not? And the reason why I like to stack the O-rings rather than shave this down, if anything happens to your LRPs, now what? You got a useless carburetor. This, if the anything happens to these engines, you just remove an O-ring and uh, you're good to go put this in something else. she is and this one's even got a mid-speed needle which is pretty fancy there is one more modification i'm gonna do to this uh carburetor later i'll show you in a bit first things first we're gonna remove the carburetor off of the one lrp and uh, ditch it Goodbye. Now what I did with the other carburetor is I actually took the second O-ring off of the LRP carburetor, so that's what I'm gonna do. So we have both carbs installed. Now time for the last mod. It's gonna take this uh, Venturi. It comes with a 7.5 Venturi um, and an OS Venturi, a nine mil. I wanna bore these Venturis out to a nine mil. Um, OS sells them, but they're like $20 a piece. But you know what, for that price, 
I got a nine millimeter drill bit for it, I'll tell you that. Here we go, nine millimeter drill bit incoming. Modify the world. So there we go, after I uh, bore it out, I just run a little bit of Scotch-Brite just through the bore and just through the bottom here. Just uh, polish it just a little bit, make it lick a little noise. Blow it off with some compressed air. She's ready to go. Now you don't have to bore it to nine millimeter. Uh, you can bore this to whatever you want, but uh, it's pretty pointless going past nine millimeter because the throat of the carburetor is only nine mil. So going to like 10 millimeter, for example, is like completely pointless, but hey, you do you. There we go, two board, 6.5 millimeter Venturi to nine mil. So I got some pipes in. Um, I don't think I'll be running them for long, but uh, here they are for now. The Dynamite 053, got a pair of them. I couldn't beat the deal I got on Amazon. I think I got them for 50 bucks a piece. Uh, that's probably about 30 bucks US. Uh, like I said, pretty smoking deal. I couldn't pass it up. So I got two of them. These are going to be here for now. Probably not forever. I think I've got a different exhaust in mine. But, um, yeah, I don't think this will benefit this setup much at all. Like, this would, this pipe would be perfect for, like, a, a RTR engine. Even a lot of bone stock engines this would be great for. But a couple... Uh, modified engines uh i don't know if this will be too good or not but it's here now let's throw it on there's something like that if it'll stay here's the linkage all set up Kind of funny, two factory carburetors and they both have different high speed needle settings. We'll just have to fix that. There she is with a couple filters on them, just uh, using a couple factory HPI Savage Air filters. So here she is. There were some tedious small things I did off camera. Let me show you what I did. Bracket and the fuel tank and all the plumbing routed. I still might go over it because this is a bit of a mess back here. I installed the uh, pipe mount. So this is what I got here. So this is the actual pipe mount. And then I bought these uh, Red's pipe holder springs. So what I did for this was I didn't really want to drill into the actual TVP. So this one, uh, you can kind of see here, it... Uh, has a twin servo option. This is a pretty cool thing. So you can run dual servos and just have insanely powerful steering. But uh, that Protec 170 TBL is pretty powerful. So I just kind of took the mounting hole from it and put that there. And then I just kind of tweak the springs. That one was pretty much a bolt on. Uh, I just kind of made a 90 degree down here. That's on. Same with this side. Just gave her a nice bend right there. And boom! Pipes are on. And the last thing I did is I just kind of just kind of rough cut the body. Cut the back out for the two beauty engines back here. Man, I just did the first couple break-in tanks. Just, just the idle tanks. And man, 
I don't know who I should be impressed with. The, the cheap engines that run better than uh, that engine up there. Or perhaps it's the, you can see right there. Or perhaps it's RB Mods. Or maybe those uh, OS 21Js have something to do with it. I don't know, but all I know is uh, these engines run freaking sweet. First pull each to start. And uh, man, they just ran like a clock. I can't believe how good these things ran. So all that's left to do with this thing is uh, finish the break in and paint that body. Uh, but for now, she's done. Uh, maybe give me some paint ideas. I'm thinking of orange, black, and blue for the body. Let me know what you think.